What is up, everyone? So as many of you know, Madden franchise is in a bad place right now as it's really been brought to light in recent weeks through the trending hashtag fix Madden franchise movement on Twitter. Uh, but EA has effectively stripped the game mode we all love to bare bones to the point that it now has less depth, features, and realism than it did 15 years ago. And EA has even gone as far as betraying its core user base by lying about recommitting to the game mode only to announce that no new features will be added to the already lacking franchise mode in Madden 21. So the things we want added to the game have been well documented, anything from assistant coaches with skill trees to a scouting overhaul. And I need to emphasize that we are still owed features such as this each time a new game releases, but this video is going to highlight something else that I find just as important as adding new features, and that is fixing the core issues with the features in this game mode that do exist. And what is missing from those features that we should be able to expect from the exclusive provider of simulation NFL football. So I'm gonna go through a franchise experience and point out everything that sucks about franchise mode in Madden 20 and Madden 21. Again, I can say Madden 21 even though it's not out yet because as of this recording, they have added absolutely nothing to the game mode outside of minor tweaks that you'd expect in a monthly patch note. All right, so it is preseason week one. Let's take a look at free agency, see if we can improve this team before we get our season started. I think you know, our defensive line could use some help, so let's talk to Muhammad Wilkerson here. All right, uh, this isn't much of a conversation. I either sign him or I don't. I can't change the years. I can't negotiate. I can't see what his priorities are as far as playing for a good coach, a competitor, if he just wants the most money. Uh, but all right, let's go ahead and sign him for $6.5 million. All right, that was pretty easy. Let's go see how he looks in our depth chart uh, okay, he's listed here with our edge rushers because EA doesn't know the difference between a 4-3 defensive end and a 3-4 defensive end. Okay, well, let's go ahead and flip him over to defensive tackle to be the right scheme fit here. And hey, what, what if we uh, decided to make him a different number? How about number 58? Uh, it's not like that number's retired by Derek Brooks or anything. Let's go ahead and use that. Okay, I guess there's nothing else to do here in week one of our franchise. There's no camp battles in the preseason. There's no fog of war. There's no storylines of people trying to battle for the team. Let's just keep on going. Oh, we can do our training. Let's see what this looks like. All right, surprise, surprise. It's the same shallow, repetitive, predictable, development system that we've had for four or five Maddens now, so we can go ahead and skip through that. Let's see, do we get any narratives or idea of how our uh, questionable roster bubble players are doing before we get to cuts? Nope, nothing. Let's take a look at the cut menu. That's the same. It's suggesting we cut our long snapper because why would we have a long snapper when you can play anyone there and it's all gonna work the same way? Yeah, let's uh, let's skip through the cut menu. We've seen this before. All right, week one, let's set our season goal. Oh, surprise, it's the same menu we've had for four years. You get to pick a very basic goal uh, that you forget about after the second week of the season. You can't even set it as high as winning the Super Bowl. There you go, you win some XP that you can put towards the same set of skill trees that you did the last six times you played your franchise that offer very little replayability depth or immersiveness to diversify your individual coach for this playthrough. All right, let's keep going. Oh, it's week three, lots to do this week. We can start negotiating and begin scouting players. Oh, we get custom draft classes, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and import that. All right, the scouting is the same as it's been for four or five Maddens. Uh, there's no narratives here. There's very little customization or ability to pick how we want to invest our scouting at all. Let's just spend those three points, and that's all we get to know about Joe Burrow. Nothing else to see here. Okay, we get to negotiate this week. 
All right, Tyree Kill, ready to renegotiate. Let's see, we know we have Mahomes coming up. Can we backload this? We can front load Mahomes or vice versa? No, can we put some incentives in here? No, there's none of that. I guess we just gotta structure it this way, the same way we structure every contract, which is gonna be really backloaded. On to week four. Ooh, a breakout player. Let's check this out. It's gonna be Demarcus Robinson seems to be having a bit of a breakout season here, a chance to increase that development trade, a cool storyline. Got to be consistent with his performance this season. So let's see how Demarcus Robinson is playing for us here. And he has five receptions for 25 yards. What? How is that a breakout, Madden? Five receptions for 25 yards, he gets a breakout. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's skip ahead here, see if we can turn this season around, see how we're doing midway. All right, we're six and two now. Let's see if we can look at the trade market. Maybe, you know, here at the deadline, maybe uh, bring someone in to improve our team. Let's look at the standings and see maybe if we can find a corner that would make sense. Maybe someone on a bad team, but at the end of his contract, a veteran, someone a team would be willing to part with, as we see oftentimes in the NFL. All right, the Redskins, they're two and six. They got a couple guys on that roster. Let's go uh, start a conversation with them. They got Josh Norman. They got Dominique Rogers, cromarty Quentin Dunbar, all guys on the last year of their contract. Uh, let's have a little uh, dialogue here about Josh Norman. All right, he's up there in age. He's going to hit the market. You're probably not going to get him back anyway. I'm thinking, you know, maybe a fourth round pick. We'll see what you think about that. And they're not even remotely interested. What about a, I mean, the third round pick is way more than I'd be willing to go for a, a corner of that age. But I'll see if you're uh, willing to bite. No? Okay. Uh, let's just see. What if we gave you our first round pick? We're really desperate. Oh my god, not even close? Are you kidding me? Okay, what about if we swap this for Dominique Rogers cromarty You have to accept that. 33 years old, last year of your deal for a first round pick? What? You gotta be kidding me, EA? This team's two and six. I just offered them a first round pick for a guy that has no piece of the future. Oh my God, that's just bad. All right, well, it's not really worth trying any more trades at this point. Let's just go to the end of the season and see what our stats looked like. All right, we went 11 and five. Let's see, Mahomes, a 117.9 quarterback rating, really played up to snuff 36 touchdowns, seven picks. On an 11 and 5 season, let's see if he uh, qualified for any awards here. Just scroll over here to yearly awards. Y you have got to be kidding me. A 7 and 9 Marcus Mariota wins MVP over us. And I kid you not, every time I do this, it's either Mariota, Daniel Jones, Mitchell Trubisky, the Sim stats in this game. And what they prioritize for awards is just broken. Let's see if we want anything else here. Darren Lee wins Defensive Player of the Year as a 73 overall linebacker. All right, I'll take that. Now, if he won Defensive Player of the Year, he's got to be a competitor for Best Linebacker here, right? Oh, that makes sense. Mariota won MVP for the league but did not win Best Quarterback. All right, I got that. Let's see. Uh, best Wide Receiver, Tyreek Hill. Best linebacker, Jadavion Clowney takes it from Darren Lee because those two definitely should be competing for the same awards. Jadavion Clowney, an edge rusher, and Darren Lee, who won best, uh, you know, defensive player of the year, uh, but they're going to give best linebacker to a guy whose job is completely different. Yep, that makes sense. EA, why is Jadavion Clowney not in here with the best D lineman? Get your head out of 2004 and update your positional terminology. This is embarrassing. All right, let's see how we do in the playoffs. We lost. Okay, is there anything to discuss now that we lost? Maybe a staff change. Do we want to change our scheme next year? 
any players upset about how they were used this year, anyone want to get traded or talk about impending free agency. No, there's no narratives going on. There's no nothing. So let's just keep on moving. It's not like we have uh, Eric Bieniemy, one of the best offensive coordinators in the league, that is uh, you know, a hot name that is probably in real life being interviewed for head coaching jobs that we should be swaying to stay for this team. Oh, but the Pro Bowl. We get to coach the Pro Bowl. Do we play it? I'm going to pass on that one, EA. Right, let's keep going through the postseason. Still nothing to discuss. No narratives other than Taylor Bennett telling us about who's in the Super Bowl. Still no conversation about assistant coaches or a scheme change or anything like that. Let's see. Development boosts are in. Ooh, Tyree Kill went up to Superstar. Let's see what kind of abilities he got. Post Flag Elite and Post Specialist. So he gets two in one or one in two. Post Specialist does nothing for us if we have Post Flag Elite. All right, can we change this? Can we edit this? Maybe give him a Go Ball Specialist or anything? Nope, all right. I guess we'll just take that middle finger from EA and carry on with our lives. Let's do our upgrades first here. Darren Lee had a great year, won Defensive Player of the Year. He's got a bunch of upgrade points. Let's check on him. You, you, you can't be serious. Defensive player of the year did not even go from normal development to star. What a joke. So postseason's kind of done here. We haven't really had to do anything here. We haven't been able to figure out our staff for next year, what our plan of attack for the offseason is going to be, if we want to do any kind of scheme changes. None of that other than Taylor Bennett coming to talk to us about another team's Super Bowl matchup. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, check out the offseason here. So we got to do our renegotiations. So let's take a look at our re-signings here. We do know that Patrick Mahomes deal is looming long term, so we might have to make some tough decisions here. We got Fuller and Chris Jones are up, big pieces of this team. I definitely want to keep Chris Jones around here, but I think Kendall Fuller, we really can't really keep him around. He's getting expensive for a corner, but what's that? In real life, if a player hits free agency and makes a bunch of money, you get a compensatory pick, which rewards you for developing players and letting them go in free agency and adds a complex decision for you to make each year based on your free agents. That's not in the game. Oh, okay, so if we just let him go, we're not gonna get anything? All right, well, we don't really have an option, so we'll let him go, let alone the fact that Fuller is a 90 overall in Madden's roster. God knows where that rating came from. But I do definitely wanna keep Chris Jones around here. All right, can we structure his contract or put any incentives in here? Nope, that's gonna be the same old deal. Well, at least he's only asking for about a half of what he should in real life as one of the top pass rushing defensive tackles. So might as well bring him in here for about half of what Aaron Donald makes because that's realistic. All right, let's see what uh, regular free agency might hold for us here. So we only have about $8 million in cap space. Let's see if we can figure out a way to get rid of some cap. All right, uh, Sammy Watkins. You know how in real life we were able to negotiate with you to take a pay cut that was team friendly, that allowed you to stay here because you wanted to be a team player and compete for rings because that's your character? Well, we can't really do that here in Madden. So we're going to go ahead and release you uh, to clear up that cap space because we can't restructure that contract. But that does give us about $20 million in cap space. Let's maybe talk to Ronald Darby here, a cheaper option at corner, now that we had to let Fuller go. So, okay, I can't structure this deal. There's no conversation going on here. I don't know what your priorities are, like in previous Maddens. I don't know if you want more money or if you want to play for a contender. But what I do know is that I am the only team bidding and that you like this deal. There is no fog of war here. As long as I'm on top of whatever this point system is, I'm very likely going to get you. So I know exactly where I stand with you. 
Let's see, we could use a center too. So Ben Jones, the Jets have 72 points on you. Let's talk to you again. I don't know what your priorities are, but I do know if I can get that point total above exactly what the Jets are offering, then you're most likely going to sign with me. So let's go ahead, give you one year, seven million, and there you go. I'm above the Jets. I should be getting Ben Jones here. Let's go ahead and advance to stage two. And there you go. Ben Jones, Ronald Darby, just as expected. Ooh, scouting is available. I think the combine scores are in. Let's see what this does for scouting. All right, combine grades are in. Let's look at the receivers here. All right, Jerry Judy, 7.2 grade. You can see those scores. I can't really sort by... 40 yard dash time or anything like that. It's the same thing, just scout those three. All right, I guess that's all we get for the scouting. Well, what about the draft here? Bucks have the first pick, so Jameis did not work out here. Bucks really struggling, you would think, with that first overall pick. They'll be thinking, uh, pretty easy decision here. Joe Burrow, right? Well, let's see what they do, and they take Chase. Young. So instead of moving on from Jameis after a fifth season of struggling here, they're going to take a pass rusher and give Jameis another crack here, despite the fact that he led them to the worst record in football. All right, the Giants with the second pick, they just took Daniel Jones last year. Seems pretty unlikely that they would take Joe Bo. Oh, they did take Joe Burrow. Okay, well, Daniel Jones must have been miserable then, right? If they're going to pass on him, this must be a Kyler Murray uh, to Josh Rosen type of scenario, right? Well, let's go see what Daniel Jones did last year. He didn't even start. So they draft Daniel Jones sixth overall. Don't start him and then draft a quarterback second the next year. Thanks, EA. That's fantastic. Excellent drafting logic uh, by the top two picks in the in the draft. And that's the top two picks. Can you imagine how bad this thing gets as we go? My God, that's bad. All right, let's go ahead to our pick. And uh, wow, the top three quarterbacks behind Joe Burrow are still sitting here. Not like we've ever seen anyone reach for a quarterback. Uh, but Tua, Herbert, Love, they're all still here. So maybe we could... Uh, Get a team that needs a quarterback to trade up here. Let's see what kind of trade offers we might be able to get for this. Just want to get a first rounder, you know, move down a few spots, pick up a pick later. I can get a second rounder from Buffalo, second rounder, a second rounder from New England, a future second and third round pick from San Francisco, a future second from Miami. Oh, great offer, Miami. All right, I'm not going to take any of those, but maybe if we go in and uh, send an offer to a team like, I don't know, Green Bay that might come up and move up for a quarterback. Maybe take Jordan Love or Tua, give a first and a fourth round pick. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something that might happen in reality? All right, a first and a fourth for the 24th pick. What do you think, Green Bay? And nope. They're not interested. All right, so we're basically SOL. We're just going to sit here and make this pick. I'm thinking a cornerback. Let's go ahead and maybe grab a good athlete and Noah Igbenogany drafted. All right, 71 overall, normal dev. We can see all of his rate, uh, ratings, his traits. We know exactly where he's going to come in in the preseason. There won't be any camp battle, not going to have any fog of war or anything. We'll know exactly how he's going to play. Uh, so there's your draft. Let's just skip through the rest of this. This is a mess. And here we are back in preseason week one. And what do you know? We play the same team. In fact, the entire preseason schedule is the same. Panthers, Dolphins, Falcons, Jets. Stuck for eternity with the schedule. The year is 2037. And the Panthers, Chiefs. Preseason kickoff lives on. All right, well, we know how this preseason looks. There's no camp battles. There's no narratives. There's no understanding what rookies might need to make the team or un uncovering ratings like we had in previous Maddens. So let's just go to week one. 
So let's do a little self-scouting here on this Chargers team. Let's maybe check out the defense. All right, they're a 4-3 team. So great, that makes total sense why they would sell Parnell McPhee, who's basically a three-tech defensive end to play 4-3 outside linebacker to take Kaiser White, who's more of a safety's job at right outside linebacker. Yep, that makes total sense. Good job, good team building by the Madden AI right there. It's not like it would take that much to update uh, positional terminology to uh, modern lingo past 2013. All right, let's, uh, let's hop in. Let's see a little gameplay here. Maybe check out our rookie, Noah Igbenog. Why, why is he wearing two shoes, two different pairs of shoes? What? Oh, that's a glitch that's been in this game uh, that makes custom draft classes look worse that's been in this game since Madden 19? Well, that's great. I guess I'm going to have to edit all of my rookies uh, so they don't wear two different pairs of cleats. That's fantastic. Let's get out of here. Let's skip to... Uh, the midseason here, see how our team's doing. Oh, we got a big contract this year. Patrick Mahomes, appreciate you for uh, being a trooper here, not holding out. You know, why would we want holdouts in this game, playing on that rookie contract, despite being the best quarterback in the NFL? Uh, let's look at negotiations. All right, we can go up to seven years, but we can't really move this around. Again, we can't do incentive-based. We can't front load, back load, structure it in a way that makes sense for our team and the way we want to team build. So we'll just give you what you're asking for here. All right, let's see how Mahomes is playing here. He's 16th in passing yards. He's 19th with a 111 quarterback rating. Uh, that's pretty crazy. Let's see what the rest of the league looks like right now. All right, the passing leaders, Joe Burrow, rookie Josh Allen, Mitch Trubisky, uh, we got Jameis Winston playing well after they passed up on Joe Burrow to draft him. Joe Flacco still alive here for the Broncos. They got, God, like, where are the good quarterbacks? How far down here do we have to go other than Aaron Rodgers? I mean, Josh Allen is the 22nd quarterback. Trubisky is the 26th ranked quarterback. Jameis is the 20th ranked quarterback like god knows what joe flacco is these are your passing leaders we gotta scroll all the way down here to see patrick mahomes your number one quarterback andrew luck is in this roster ryan brady lamar there's your mvp mariota uh, rivers wentz wilson murray prescott cousins watson Stafford, like these are the guys that should be at the top of the passing charts. Overall, it just does not matter for the sim engine in this game. Okay, we're taking on the Raiders this week. Let's see what their roster looks like. They do have Claylon Furl there at defensive end. Okay, Willie Henry. Yep, he's definitely not an edge player, EA. He's a defensive tackle. He should be in there with the DT. And Aaron Lynch. Aaron Lynch at outside linebacker, uh, opposite of Vontez Perfect. And they signed Willie Henry to play 4-3 defensive end. I mean, you guys get the point. This game is awful. There's no immersion. There's no depth. It's the same recycled stuff from the last five Maddens. It, it, it's a joke. There are things missing in this game that were in Madden 05 15 years ago. But instead of updating the game, just back to the point that it was 15 years ago. It's all we're asking for. Instead of doing that, they'd rather leave this game mode bare bones, leave it the same boring stuff so you get bored and go spend your money on Ultimate Team Packs. So here's hoping for a change. Moving forward, please do share this video. I hope EA can get a look at this and see some of the many broken, lame, exhausting elements of franchise mode that we're asking for and why we're so disappointed and ticked off. So share the video. Please do like it as well. I appreciate you watching. Uh, cheers, and we'll see you later. Peace.